In the Kapiansky sector, intense fighting is taking place in the Ivanovka area and on the approaches to Sinkovka, where, according to some reports, Russian troops were able to significantly improve their position. In Kupiansk itself, despite the assumptions of Western analysts about an imminent assault on the city, a relatively calm situation reigns. Ammunition warehouses are being built here, and fortification work is being carried out in the area of the former airport in Sobolevka. In the Soldar direction, the main battles took place in the Kromovo area. The Russian armed forces, with fire support, continued to advance in this area. Also, Russian troops were able to gain a foothold in the northern part of Bogdanovka. At the same time, on the southern flank of Bakhmut there were oncoming battles to the northwest of Kleshchivka and in Andreevka. In the Donetsk direction, the main battles are still taking place in the Avdivsky sector. At the same time, the same situation remains here. The main battles are conducted on the flanks under conditions of high intensity of shelling. Over the past two days, Russian troops were able to advance and strengthen positions on the northern flank at Petrovsky and along the forest plantations towards Novobakmutovka. There were also battles on the southwestern sector of the front in the Vadiano area. In the Orkovsky sector, the front line has not changed. There are oncoming battles near Rabatino, where Russian troops carried out assault operations and took several strongholds of the Ukrainian armed forces. The AFU, taking advantage of bad weather conditions such as fog and rain, using artillery, cluster munitions, and more recently, tanks, are making attempts to attack the positions of the Russian armed forces near Verbovoy and north of Novoprokopovka, but without success. At the same time, Russian troops in this direction are experiencing problems with counter-battery communications and electronic warfare. The situation in the Kherson direction has not changed. Permanent fighting continues in Krinky, and there has also been unconfirmed information about the advance of Russian troops on the islands. Crossing the left bank of the Dnieper remains a significant problem for the Ukrainian armed forces, some a few units suffering heavy losses, are trying to retreat from occupied territories. At the same time, it was reported about possible plans of the Ukrainian command to carry out a large transfer of forces to the left bank in order to maintain existing control. However, this option should not be ruled out, especially considering the AFU's previous suicidal tendencies in this direction. Missile Strike and Tactics of Ukrainian Formations this night, the Ukrainian armed forces once again struck Crimea. Four storm shadow slash scalp missiles were fired from two Su 24M bombers towards the Saki airfield. Aviation at the base was already dispersed on alert, but the target was not planes. Ukrainian forces managed to hit the administrative building, but at the time of the alarm it was empty, which allowed RF to avoid losses. Another thing is interesting about this attack, what the Ukrainian armed forces tactics became during the attacks. All yesterday, Ukrainian aviation was taking off and landing. Periodically, ADM-160 MALD decoys were launched from the MiG-29 and Su-27. It is for this reason that aviation danger has been repeatedly declared in Crimea. Decoys are displayed as real missiles allowing the AFU to mislead air defense systems and determine the location and time of their reaction. At the time of one of these launches, the armed forces of Ukraine tried to deliver a real strike with a Neptune missile on Cape Tarkhankit or a Pretoria, but the missile was shot down by a MiG-31 fighter. And in the evening, on the eve of the launch of Storm's missiles and five Beaver UAVs were sent to Crimea from Kablivo, which are less noticeable than the same Nugent 5 UAVs. They flew along the western coast of Crimea and went on patrol near Novofedorovka, where they were shot down. A couple of hours later, two Su-24M bombers attacked Saki, which was actively tracked by drones the night before and last night, as well as by a NATO satellite constellation. More than 10 images were taken over three days. 
But the essence of the actions of the armed forces of Ukraine is obvious. After the weakening of the fleet, the main task is to suppress air defense in Crimea, and this can be done by disrupting the combat control of air defense and aerospace forces units. That is why the emphasis is primarily on command posts, which should be kept in mind during further attacks by the Ukrainian armed forces. Strikes by the Russian armed forces continued against rear targets in Ukraine. This time the targets of the strikes were the Ukrainian energy and military infrastructure. In particular, strikes against frontline targets, for example the Kurakovskia thermal power plant, were highlighted. At the same time, explosions were recorded in the Dnepropetrovsk, Kharkov, Khmelnytsky and Nikolaev regions. However, it is currently not possible to confirm the final result of these strikes. There is panic in the armed forces of Ukraine. The United States will no longer be able to supply Patriot missiles to Ukraine for a long time, New York Times. These air defense systems played an important role in Ukraine's air defense system, but the White House and Pentagon warned that the United States would soon be unable to supply Ukrainian Patriot batteries with interceptor missiles, which cost between $2 million to $4 million apiece. If our foreign partners turn away from us, we will return to the beginning of the war, when people simply did not come out of their shelters, and the Russians tried to turn our cities into ruins. The Ukrainian Armed Forces Major Panics Delivery of the first F-16s to Kiev by Denmark has also been postponed for at least six months. Ukrainian pilots are not yet ready to be allowed at the controls of the fighter jets. Initially, delivery was planned around the new year, but has now been postponed to the second quarter. Among other things, we are talking about completing the training of Ukrainian personnel who will operate the aircraft after their transfer. The preparation schedule depends simultaneously on a number of factors, such as technical and weather conditions. The Berlingsk newspaper quotes a message from the Kingdom's Ministry of Defense. Six Ukrainian pilots are currently undergoing training to fly the F-16 in Denmark. At the end of August, the Netherlands announced its readiness to transfer 42 American F-16 fighters to Ukraine. Denmark promised Kiev 19 such aircraft. U.S. authorities approved this step. Kiev expressed hope that Ukraine would receive fighter jets in the first half of 2024. In turn, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin stated that this would happen no earlier than the spring. Zelensky demands to appropriate Russian assets worth $300 billion. Ukraine should use frozen Russian assets. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky announced this. According to him, the frozen assets of the Russian Federation may soon end up in Ukraine. I force partners to work quickly to create a reliable legal framework. This year we must achieve tangible progress on the issue of using frozen Russian assets in favor of Ukraine, Zelensky said. He published his statement on the social network X. According to the Ukrainian leader, the value of frozen Russian assets has reached $300 billion. He noted that they could soon be in Ukraine. Zelensky said that he hopes for help from the G7 partnership.